Ah, yes, the luxury sedans that nobody thinks about because everybody's buying SUVs. Perfect. So as of late, I've been on TikTok. If you guys haven't followed me, it's a little reckless over there, so don't judge me. But anyway, I had this request from this user on TikTok, shout out to BitQ52 over on TikTok, because he decided to reach out to me and say, can you do a video on the S60? And I was like, hmm, maybe I should do that. I'm going to explore what happened to the S60 and why it's the most invisible and conservative sedan on the market, but probably one of the best bargains that you could buy. So stick around and stay tuned because you are now watching the breakdown. So as I said before, most people don't ever think about Volvo when they think about luxury sedans, but the gag is is that Volvo has some of the most safest cars in the world and holds the world record for the Guinness World Record of, I think I said that right, the Guinness World Record for the car with the most miles with a 1966 that has a record breaking and astounding 3.5 million miles on it. And the crazy part is with that title, you would think more people would be impressed by the reliability factor and would want more Volvo. But there's a reason why the S60 has not done that well in the last 20 years. So we're gonna go into the history. I am not gonna bombard you guys with the FICO commercial. You know the drill. It's in the description below if you're in the market for a car. Nick Holler. So <laughs> I'm gonna go over the history of the Volvo S60 and then we're gonna explain why it didn't do so well and if it's a good car. So if you guys are interested, continue throughout the video. I'm gonna put the chapters in the link in the description below and see. Oh. Before I get started, if you're in the market for a Volvo or considering a Volvo, leave a comment in the description below. Let me know what you think. I wanna hear your thoughts because I would love to see where your mind is at and whether or not you're considering one. The S60 or the 60 series was the replacement for the Volvo S70, which has the more classic box shaped design that more people associate with Volvos. And this was the first introduction into the new class of Volvo as in 1999. It had just gotten acquired by Ford as Ford wanted to expand their premium lineup and they thought Volvo would be a great acquisition. Now Volvo at the time was having some financial troubles. This is how Ford was able to buy Volvo for $6.5 billion in 1999. And it was a very strategic decision, but the gag is, is that pretty much they ended up selling it and they was like, oh, this is a waste of time. This kind of plays into the idea of what happened with the Volvo S60. At the time of the acquisition, the chief executive of Ford, Jacques Nasir, I think I said that right. Y'all, I never know how to say these names. The name be complicated. And pretty much wanted to sell 200,000 luxury cars, but really want to sell a million over the next several years. One of the first vehicles to be conceived of this acquisition was the Volvo S60. Introduced in 2001, the Volvo S60 was intended to compete against the Audi A4, Mercedes-Benz C-Class, as well as the benchmark that everybody was trying to get to at the time, the BMW 3 Series. The S60 had a total of three different generations in its lifetime and its sales have pretty much been abysmal. Produced from 2000 to 2009, the first generation Volvo S60 had a total of three different engines, one being the 2.4 liter turbocharged five cylinder engine, the naturally aspirated 2.4 liter five cylinder engine, which produced 168 horsepower. And there also was the 2.3 liter turbocharged engine that produced a total of 247 horsepower. Now this did go to the front wheels and was completely different as opposed to the other competitors such as the Mercedes and BMW were rear wheel drive and all of them had options for all wheel drive, formatted, X drive, all those good things. But the difference was those platforms are based off rear wheel drive platforms as opposed to the front wheel drive bias platform that was based on the Volvo. Now the interesting thing about the Volvo is, is that because the Volvo was Ford owned and Ford managed, a lot of the components that came from the Volvo were infused into the Volvo. Volvo S60 came with three different engine choices and could be made it to either five-speed manual or six-speed automatic. Most of my data is only up to 2005 as many of the data servers don't really keep anything past that because it's not important for them. I can only go to 2005 numbers on so it kind of skewed the numbers a little bit, but bear with me. In its first generation, the S60 would go on to sell 581,947 units between 2000 and 2009. The second generation debuted in 2010 and this was after the Chinese manufacturer Geely acquired it after Ford sold off Volvo, which we begin to see some design elements change in that regard and that's also where we begin to see a little more of Volvo begin to fade to the background because it was dynamic for them, but it still was not an adjustment enough for people to consider it as a viable option. In this particular rendition, this generation went from an inline five to an inline six and also turbocharged it to deliver a total of 300 horsepower and going from zero to 60 in 5.5 seconds, which was comparable at the time to a BMW 335i. From an interior standpoint, it had a very plush interior and you could definitely tell there were some more creature comforts added. Also, there were a lot more safety 
standard suites involved in the making of this car. And there are a lot of things that we see today, such as forward collision warning, blind spot monitoring, all those different nannies and doodads that we oftentimes want to turn off, but we shouldn't because it's an insurance liability. In this particular generation, as it was acquired by Geely and the design elements changed, we begin to see more and more praise from the overall packaging of it, but the sales declined. During this generation, Volvo sold a total of 140,121 units in its generation, a 76% decline in the overall sales in comparison to the last generation. While this is just my opinion, I believe that part of the reason that the Swedish did not flourish the way that they thought they would is because of the influence between the Americans and the Chinese, because when you switch that many companies in that amount of time and design language and the performance measures, they just, you, you can't find your niche. You can't find your, your hearken to what your purpose is in the automotive industry. And that is one of the bigger complaints that I had about Volvo when I initially saw them back in the early 2010s. For the third generation by 2019, we would begin to see a steep decline in sales. But what's interesting about this particular generation is that this generation is Polestar design. Now for you people that don't know what Polestar is, Polestar is Volvo's electric vehicle division and they have the Polestar 1, which is a mild hybrid and a completely electric, which is the Polestar 2. The Polestar division is owned by Geely, again, that Chinese company that owns Volvo. And we begin to see a lot more difference in the overall design elements that we saw from the first generation when they initially got acquired and that's because they still had some Ford design elements included and so we still begin to see the decline of Volvos in particular the S60 because there was so much technological packaging included in this but nobody took to it. So the third generation S60 was an unseen gem car and driver pretty much praised it for its technological packaging, efficient drivetrain, and a suite of safety standards like I said as in the previous generation, things we see today in most cars. And Mercedes also did a lot of these contributions as well, but Volvo is truly the safety pioneer. Now, the interesting thing about Volvo in their newer renditions is that they come both turbocharged and supercharged. The T5 model comes with a two liter turbocharged engine that produces 250 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. For comparability, this is the same as the BMW 330i, which produces about 248 horsepower and roughly about 255 pound feet of torque. The T6 model, model comes with a two liter turbocharged engine, but it's also supercharged and it's also four cylinder that produces 316 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Now, if you f around and got the T8E all wheel drive model, how the f you say it basically you would get the in hybrid model which came with not just a turbocharger not just a supercharger but also electric motors this gave you a complete total of 400 horsepower and 472 pound feet of torque now from a technological perspective it is very complex and is a lot of moving parts but because it is a hybrid model the engine is only working half the time in some cases seven dual clutch but in other cases there's eight there's rarely a 10 speed the only 10 speed i can think about is hondas the t8 model would have about 400 miles of range making it one of the most fuel efficient efficient cars that you could get on the market. And what's crazy is despite having all of this technology, all of this efficiency, it still only sold 46,000 to date. That is a 67% decrease from the last generation. And if you haven't noticed, they went from 587,000 to an abysmal 46,000 total. This is over the course of like the last three years. Now comes the question of why the S60 remains to be one of the most forgotten about cars on the market despite having so much to offer. For starters, most people who drive a Mercedes, a BMW, a Lexus, they love that rear wheel drive feel and that increases the handling dynamics as well as makes the car much more engaging to drive. I don't care how you do it. Outside of Honda, they have been, seems to be the only people that have mastered the front wheel drive setup. The only luxury car that I can think of that's front wheel drive outside of the Lincoln MKZ is the Lexus ES350. The Lexus ES350 is only successful because of the nameplate behind it and it's essentially a guzzied up, prettied up, Camry. In addition to front wheel drive, it also boiled down to pricing. Most of the Volvos were only a couple of thousand dollars difference between the Germans. And while the Germans do offer an a la carte packaging system, meaning that you can custom order them, Volvo still did not have the preciseness and the brand loyalty and legacy that these other companies have, despite being one of the safest cars in the world. Now, the Volvo S60 did remain competitive against the Audi A4, but as we all know, in comparison to Mercedes-Benz and BMW, 
Audi is considered a third choice. It is not considered an initial choice. And Volvo was only comparable to them because they offered all wheel drive in addition to a turbocharged five cylinder. For most people who get an Audi, they usually get the A4 and S4 because of those exact lineup and all wheel drive five cylinder models, which is not offered to the same degree, such as Mercedes Benz and BMW. And the last thing is, is that outside of the pricing and the warranty, because Volvo didn't quite offer the same level of warranty that the Germans did, in addition to the leasing ability, because Mercedes-Benz, Audi, and BMW have mastered the leasing model, the last thing was, was that the design was completely subjective. There was nothing dynamic about the Volvo up until the last five years. And at that point, it was too late. And part of that is because Ford and Geely subsequently owned Volvo and they were never able to truly find their niche. They're nice cars, they're great cars, but now they have been left into the same dirt dust that the Cadillacs and the Lincolns have been left into, especially if they're not a black wing and Lincoln for whatever reason just can't get it together. And now Volvo goes into that Buick semi-luxury category. And I believe that is the true reason why it has never been seen as prestigious. It's always been seen as a step up luxury, but not quite full luxury. So if you're in the market and you're wondering, well, nobody buys them, should I buy one? If you're gonna buy one, they're fairly reliable. I would say if you're going to buy one, lease one. I am not a proponent of buying or finance cars. I just got torched on TikTok because people thought I was crazy for saying that a cash car is not as good as a brand new car. Don't argue with me, I did the analysis. I would encourage that if you can, Go get the subscription. Volvo offers a subscription package, which pretty much is all inclusive. And that is not just the car itself, but also insurance, warranty, and pretty much normal wear and tear stuff. But that is a great deal for $600 a month, which is typically what it costs. And you will have to see your local Volvo dealer for details, but it is a great option as opposed to traditional leasing and traditional financing. But Volvos for the most part have been fairly reliable. I have looked on carcomplaints.com, couldn't find many complaints about the S60 with the only exception of the 2012 model consuming excessive amounts of oil and some cases stalling out. Repair Power noted that it was a three and a half out of five stars, which means that it has an average amount of reliability. Car and Driver had for the first couple of miles, which is about 40,000 miles, they pretty much had it flawless. So I would say overall, the S60 is a great bargain if you decide you want a luxury car, but don't necessarily want to pay BMW and Mercedes price. With that being said, we're at the end of the video. Thank you for watching this long. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Also, be on the lookout. I am coming out with several different things. The book is almost finished. I know I keep joking about this book. The, the book is almost finished as well as I just introduced BreakSpark.com, which is my automotive website for all of your latest news and reviews. I'll be hosting a couple of other things on there that will be exclusive to that platform and not on YouTube because I need to be charging y'all. As well as I am offering consultative services in the event you are in the market for car and need help getting so. So go over to BreakSpark.com and let me know if you need things so I'll see what I can do. With that being said, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, I have several others regarding brand reviews. Go check those out. My latest video on the Toyota Tacoma was probably one of my more favorite videos. And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you later.